Hello everybody, we're going to paint a stylized landscape today. I'm going to start with the background using just three colors, yellow, orange, and red. And so we'll begin, I'm going to start with the uh, lightest color at the bottom of the canvas, just working with cool yellow. And I'm being very generous with this because I want to make sure it covers the canvas well. So I've started off with this yellow here going across and making sure I've got really good coverage here. And now without even rinsing off my brush, I'm going to start picking up orange and I'm going to start by making the orange blend with the yellow, creating a kind of a gradation. I'm just working from side to side. And now I'm going to work my way back up. And now I'm going to go in with some warm red. Make the red also blend a little bit into the orange. Next, we're going to be adding clouds to the sky. Now, in a landscape, usually the top represents uh, the area that's overhead, which means it's going to be a bit closer to your point of view, and so the clouds are going to look larger. The further down we go towards the horizon, the further away they're going to get from you, the smaller they should be, and the fainter they should look because there's more atmosphere between you and uh, the uh, clouds in that area. So I'm going to be working with a tinted color, uh, tinted uh, version of yellow. In other words, it's yellow mixed with white. And I'm also gonna be working with a little bit of red, and a little bit of violet to create these clouds. So since the light is coming down here from the bottom, that means that for every cloud, the shadows are gonna be on the top and the highlights are gonna be on the bottom. And I'm gonna start with the lightest colors first and then blend in shadows and texture to the clouds as well. So I'm gonna start here near the top of the canvas. And I'll start off by just kind of like making a cloud shape using my light color. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some middle values by actually using a little bit of red in areas of the cloud. And I'm basically just going to like tap with the brush just gently to make it kind of blend in with the uh, light color that's already uh, there up there on the uh, cloud. And now for some extreme contrast, I'm going to add a little bit of violets just so we could get darker in places. And again, I also want to blend that in with my other colors. And this works best while the paint is still wet on your canvas, which will allow more mixing and blending together directly. So you'll notice I'm using a yellowish white uh, to create these uh, cloud shapes here. And that's simply because since we don't have light coming overhead, it's not the bright of the day, uh, the color starts reflecting things around them. So since we have like a warm sunset, by changing the white to a warm yellow, a very, a very faint yellow, it gives more warmth to the clouds. So I think I'm gonna make this one a little bit more funky. Okay, now again, I'm going to go in with some red for some middle values. I'm going to actually use this to section off parts of the cloud as well. And then I want to blend it together. I don't want it to be, I don't want to create any really sharp lines with this color unless it's trying to make an actual edge. All right, so now a little bit of violets to increase the contrast.
And so this time I'm just gonna be working with a little bit of red and a tiny bit of violet. So the further down I go, the lighter the shadows are going to become on these clouds. And to help reinforce that, I'm gonna go back and blend a little bit more with my tinted yellow. And now that I've painted my clouds, I'm gonna start working on some of the land masses that are gonna go in the background. So there'll be a mountain range that's furthest back, which is gonna be a little bit lighter. Then there'll be another kind of hill-like range in front of that, which will be a bit darker. And then the very front is gonna be uh, done completely black and the actual tree will be a silhouette that comes off of here also. And I'm gonna just start off by kind of like outlining an area. As you can see, I am overlapping the clouds, which was something I had planned on doing anyway. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in most of this area, but not all of it, because I have another range of hills coming in front of that. And these are just gonna be color silhouettes. There won't be any extra details on these at all. This is just quite simply a layer within the background. Now that I've painted, now that I've painted my uh, purple mountain range, I'm going to do a darker bluish gray hilly range in front of that, which I'll extend to the bottom of the canvas. So I'm going to start off by painting a third hill in black that's going to kind of overlap these other two a bit. And then I'm going to paint a tree growing out of that, filling up basically most of the left side and top of this canvas here. So to start off, I'm using a really large brush to take care of the silhouette of the hill. I'm going to start by adding a tree trunk coming off the hill and I think I have it coming off of a bit of an angle here. I'm going to make it really really thick and wide and now I'm going to start working on making some major branches coming off of this trunk Okay, so now that I have some major branches, I'm going to start making some thinner branches growing off of those major branches. I'm also going to have some of these branches overlapping each other to give the feeling of depth on the tree. It's really easy to make trees look uh, two-dimensional by not paying attention to how branches overlap each other. So now I'm going to switch to an even smaller brush and I'm going to start walk working off of these other branches now.
And you want to make some of these lines more gnarly, bendy, kind of haphazard to kind of give that natural look of chaotic growth that you get from these uh, from trees. The branches are usually not very smooth. There's usually a lot of texture to them, a lot of bends and curves and weird angles. Okay, I'm now switching to a really small brush to add additional thin branches to this. Now, when you're working with a really small brush, I found it works easier if you somehow uh, water down the, the paint. You can either mix them with water or some water with the paint to make it thinner or use an acrylic medium to make it thinner. Uh, but by doing this, it makes it possible to get thinner lines using these smaller brushes. If you try to use the paint just as it comes out of the tube or the bottle, it might be too thick. You may have a hard time controlling what you do with that thin brush. I'm going to be mixing a light blue and using it to paint highlights of the texture on the trunk and the branches of the tree here. Now, obviously, that's probably not how it would look in real, uh, real life. It would probably be more of the gray, grayish brown of the trunk reflecting some of the warm light from the sky. But I'm working with a color theory here, basically uh, cool against warm. So you'll notice that all the warms are in the background. The cools are going to be in the foreground, which is going to create some contrast, which will make the tree stand out even more. So I'm uh, working very loosely using a, a small brush. I'm going to start down here at the base of the hill. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of creating texture. So I'm working very, very loosely with the brush here to do this. And I'm keeping in mind that the light source is coming from roughly about right here, uh, just behind the purple mountain ranges. So I'm using that to create this kind of texture now. That's basically going to inform where my highlights go. Need to work on some root placements. A few places. This will give it the uh, illusion that the trunk is not perfectly round and that parts of it are actually picking up light in places. Another thing I have to decide as I'm doing this is which branches are in front, which branches are in back. So that's something I have to decide as I'm working. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, I'm going to make this branch here to the right come out in front. And I'll make it look like the center branch is coming out from behind that branch. I'm 
and I'll make it look like this third branch is also overlapping a little bit. And there you have it, a stylized landscape working with cool against warm and some high contrast. So thank you for watching. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. This is actually a little bit differently than I normally work. I normally will spend a lot more time on a painting. This actually is compressed from less than an hour and a half worth of work. Where normally if I were working on my own, I probably would have spent as much as five or six hours on something like this. So if you'd like to see me do another painting like this, let me know. Thank you.